what's going on, Atlanta Falcons fans? Hey, man, it is pound for pound ATL, and we got another special one tonight. We are definitely excited to have this guy here, man. Big, low. What in the world, Bo? What in the world, Bo? <laughs> what's going world? on with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all doing all right tonight, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're doing real good on this one, and, and this is a, a long time coming in, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, and definitely got – you know, cemented for sure up there at training camp on Sunday. Uh, but, man, we're so glad to have you on low. Uh, how, how's your weekend been uh, outside of training camp, brother? You been doing all right? Hey, man, you know, we've you know, we, we, we been, you know, we been trying to make it, man. We're taking it slow like a cat eating a grubbing hole, my brother. You know, it's <laughs> one of those things, man. You know, we, uh, you know I've, I've been excited about training camp. I didn't get a chance to go last week because I chickened out because I thought it was going to rain. Right. But, you know, I, I got a chance to check them out. And the most beautiful thing is I got a chance to check it out with y'all, yeah. man. I definitely yeah, man. had a great time. Yeah, definitely we definitely had, had, a, had a good – we had a, you know, good observation. Um, the practice was good, which which is what, which is what we're going to spend a majority of, of this evening talking about. Um, but overall, like, just being able to, to – connect with you know other creators such as yourself the week before we were able to, to uh sit down and chat with uh twisted torch uh terry and that was good yeah. and then you know been able to like meet some of the folks that comment like um we i got to shake hands with king seven who is on uh who chats all the time and he's always one coming at me with uh about my optimism <laughs> and and after seeing him in person, I may have to like back off on being sarcastic towards him because he, yeah, that was a big fella. <laughs> but he was super nice and it was super awesome. I got to shake hands with, uh, we got to shake hands with Archangel. So like it was, man, it was a good, good day on Sunday or Saturday rather. And um, the weather was nice on us. It, it kept overcast all, all day, so it didn't get too hot. But let's uh. Man, let's transition to to what we saw. Now, Granite Low, with this being the first time we've had you on, do me a favor, go ahead and let people know where they can find you, and uh, and that okay. way, if if y'all aren't familiar with Big Low Country, you can uh, you can check him out. Definitely, man. I appreciate it. So, so my name is Big Low Country, um, Big Low Country Sports on YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I spelled it wrong. It's spelled K U N T R Y. I didn't realize I was spelling it wrong until I graduated. Oh from no! College. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find us on Instagram and on Twitter at Big Low Country. You know, we just hey man, we love to just sit around and talk about That's sports, it. man. That's a it's a beautiful yeah, thing. it's beautiful it's thing. one of those. It, it can be one of those great equalizers, right? Uh, to me. Up until I got into sports, I always said that food was the great equalizer because everybody gets hungry, right? And we can all find something that we like to eat. And I'm also coming to find out that sports is another real great equalizer um, because, you know, a lot of people like sports and everybody's got an opinion and they want to share it. And generally speaking, most people can do that in a uh, uh, meanable, like, you know, type way. And you can have some good discourse uh, talking about sports. So, yeah, it's another one of those. One of those great equalizers out there. So, Saturday we get up there. We get up there about 8.30. You know, we you know get our seats, you know, get get settled in. And they they start practice as, as they do, you know, a little bit of 11 on 11. And I think I jumped the gun a little bit because when they were out there getting warmed up, you we had Drew Dahlman, like, snapping, like, just – directly with marcus Mariota before they broke in and i was like oh crap here we go because that would have made like the third straight day of dolman starting you know and i even tweeted out i was like um i think dolman got this thing locked up lo and behold as soon as i tweet that out they bust out into the first set of 11 on 11s and Hennessy's out there. I was like, that gummit, y'all just killed my narrative. But, <laughs> <laughs> but does it surprise either one of you two that they are still like tossing this around this? Like we're a week away from our first preseason game. Like, is it worrisome that we don't have a, like the center position locked up yet? Country, I'll start with you. Um. <sighs> Uh, I, to be honest with you, I ain't gonna lie to you, Jr. I think it's I'd rather have it this way than the other okay. way. 
Um, you know, you know, we haven't got to that first preseason game yet and everything. So it's like I'd rather have them consistently alternating until we fully determine a guy. Okay. Because, you know, let's say that, you know, they just come in and say, hey, Dalman's the guy. And, you know, he comes out, and, you know, he he flops like a catfish. Right. Then, you know, they, you know, it's one of those cases. They say, they say, all right, we finna, we, we finna go with two shots of Hennessy. We finna go back to back Matt Hennessy. You know, and it's one of those cases. He comes out, he does it. So I think it's better, in my opinion, that, you know, they're at least letting both of them get first team reps. I got you, Toby. Oh. Um, I'm going in the opposite direction. Give it to Dalman. I, I think Dalman, I like Dalman coming out of college. I think he fits more with what Dwayne Let, Letford likes in his centers. Um, he, he showcases a little bit more physicality to me and the snap off the ball faster than I believe Hennessy does. Um, I understand they're trying to do this and be fair across the board with all the competition that they have across the board because they got to figure out at least 70% of their roster who's going to be the starters going into week one against the New Orleans mm-hmm. Saints. I would like to see Dalman get the job. We know what Hennessy brings to the table, and it's not much. So I don't know why you want to continue to play around with that. But for some reason, and I know they don't like to hear a lot of fans make comments about the decisions that they make, but I'm making it anyway because that's just what I'm going to do. Um, you're trying so hard to sell this fan base on Drew Dalman and Hennessy to be the guy. So you didn't go out. J.C. Treader is still sitting on the couch right, right now, and you didn't go out and get him. So you got to make a decision very quickly. Because like I said before, that culture that you're trying to project needs to show up Friday at 6 o'clock p.m. Because if the culture does not show up that you're trying to project, what's your physicality, number one, okay, there might be a major issue with what you're trying to do here going into 2023, and that's just my thoughts on it. Give it to Drew Dahlman. Let's go. I think Drew should get the job. Yeah, I think um, I can – you know, being type of person I am, I can see both sides of the situation, you know, you know, giving, uh, letting, you know, you're going back and forth between Dahlman and between Hennessy, you know, trying to let the best man win, you know, type situation. And I understand that and I get that, but I think I tend to agree unless your thought process is Hennessy was the reason why Hennessy was so bad was because of Mayfield. Like if that's what you're thinking, that in your mind that oh that that Mayfield was so bad that Hennessy didn't have a chance to look good because he was constantly trying to help Mayfield or what have you or getting blown up because of Mayfield. I'm not saying that that's the case, but if that's the thinking, right? If if that's what the yeah. coaches are thinking, then you got you pretty much like as we've all pretty much figured, Mayfield's done. You know, um, as as far as it you know, left guard is concerned. Uh, he might be able to salvage his career and become a steady backup. But right now it seems like, you know, he's absolutely had his confidence destroyed to the point where he was getting worked by uh, Derek Tondolo. Yeah, the undrafted yeah. free agent defensive tackle. You know, rookie kid, you know, coming in there and just absolutely working him to a point now where his, you know, his back is messed up. Well, if, if his back is keeping him sidelined, then I, it almost feels like they're just protecting me at this point. But that's just me speculating. So if they think that Wilkerson is going to come in and solidify that left guard spot, maybe they're feeling like that's going to allow Hennessy to focus more on what he's supposed to do at center and versus, you know, Dolman. But I tend to agree, like from what I've seen, Dolman at least last year looked stronger at the point of attack than Hennessy. Um, and you know, and if you're going to have these, you know, uh, that's something that he brings more than Hennessy in my opinion. So, uh, we're going to see how Friday rolls out. I think, what were we saying? Uh, we going to see, right? 2022 is like, we going to see, see. (laughs) that's the, that's the motto for the, for the 2022 Falcons. But anyway, so like, yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what transpires on Friday and if, you know, if Hennessy is consistently getting blown up by, you know, whoever Detroit runs out there, then that should, you know, help make that case as well. But yeah. <clears throat> uh, I am interested. We saw another talking about like, you know, D lineman. We had Vincent Taylor go down. We had Eddie Goldman retire. And then we had another one go down. 
on Sunday as well with uh, Bryce Rogers. Now he yep. was a lower uh, lower depth guy, but still that then triggers, as we said on Saturday, they're going to have to do something. Uh, and they bring in Abdullah Anderson, I believe is who they yeah, signed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ket, yeah. Stop me if you've heard this before. A former Bears player. Uh, and th- what? <laughs> really? Really? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, for, <laughs> former Bears player. But at least it wasn't like last year Bears. It was like 2018 yeah. Bears. Uh, but 2018 Bears is when you had, you know, a lot more of our coaching staff was on the 2018 Bears. So uh yeah. does make sense there. I, I'm going to go ahead and admit, I don't know nothing about him. He sounds like a camp body. Uh, it looks like he's bounced around the league, so I don't expect a ton out of him. But uh, that does lend to – I'm going to get y'all's thoughts on – how the coaching staff must view the defensive tackles if this is who they're bringing in. I mean, I, I ain't going to lie to you, JR. It's like when it comes – so when, and this is the way that I've always considered it whenever I look at the defensive tackle position. Like you got two types of defensive tackles, right? You got one that's, you know, going to just be a stopgap mm-hmm. and who's going to consistently take on two blocks. Right. Um, and then you got another one who's – who's going to do his job and somebody else. Right. Right. Like, you know, that's why you have your guys like your Indomitian Sues and, you know, people like that who, you know, they'll take on the two blocks and make sure that they do their job. And they'll also, you know, go back there and get the quarterback as well. You know, this yeah. three, four scheme, yeah. you know, especially these D tackles playing that zero on one technique most of the time. Uh, I, I, I think the way that they're looking at it, they're just looking at, Hey, I need somebody who, you know, three twenty right. plus, who can consistently take three hands on them on every play, you know, consistently take double teams. And, you know, I, I just need somebody who, who's not going to get tired to free up everything else, you know, free up everything for everybody else. So so you're um, thinking that as far as this position or, you know, this coaching staff goes, the, these interior DTs aren't like premier positions for them? I, 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 I think – I, yeah, I don't think it's like a premier, you know, we have to have this right. guy kind of situation. I think it's more of, is he big and does he have good stamina mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know, and does he have like the right type of mentality? Um, I, I, I don't think it's one of those cases where, okay, we know we could get four sacks out of him this season. We know he's going to get so many tackles for loss. I think they're they're planning everything around that DT position, in my opinion. I got you. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. Um, that was the case with Vince, Vince Taylor. He's not a guy that you was going to see get in there and get two, three sacks. Now, he could have played a three technique. Um, he played a two as well because that's where he really made it from, playing that two technique and two mm-hmm. eye, you know, up on head, up on the guard or on the inside shoulder of the guard or whatnot. But with Goldman, I think it was a little different. They wanted – that Goldman, uh, if he could have shown up to what he used to be mm-hmm. when he was with the Chicago Bears early on, and I always refer back to the 2018 Chicago Bears um, because, I mean, he was a beast in. I mean, it, especially 2015, his rookie year, um, when he was with Big, Big Vangio um, in that system that they were in. But Goldman goes down. I think now, like you're saying, I do believe it at this point because they don't have a choice that they don't have another guy now that they can rely on to handle somebody else's job, their job, and get back to the quarterback as well. And I think they want to stay young at that position, which is probably why they don't reach out to Indomitian Kasu and the money that Indomitian Kasu could possibly be wanting to come back at 35 years old as well. So I, I do believe at this point Anthony Rush is going to get a lot of, of – playing time and I think the reason why he didn't have a medical issue that was wrong with him I think they have it's just my assumption mm-hmm. right it's just my opinion I think they have him on a a, a regiment plan to help him prepare better for the bigger role that he's about to face this time because they're going to really need Anthony Rush to really shine next to great yeah Gary. that much is for sure and it's already showing in in both last Saturday and this past Saturday um just about every time Grady's out there. Just about every time you see 97, you see 94 next to him. 
You know, so yeah. Rush is is out there on a consistent basis. He's definitely going to have a bigger role this year. And then they're also, I think they're, you know, counting on uh, Taquan Graham to, to step up yeah. in a big way. Um, as we noted on uh, Saturday, Marlon Davidson was squarely with the uh, the twos or the, the second squad. Um, like your starters were, you know, because I, I counted when I saw Grady, I counted that being, you know, the starters, right? Uh, yeah, it's kind of yeah. how I looked at that. Um, so – I don't remember even a rep of Marlin being out there with Grady. Uh, it was Take on Graham, it was Anthony Rush, and then it was Lorenzo Carter, and then a mix of, you know, uh, Ebiketti, um, Ogundeji, and even Malone. Like I, yeah. I was actually kind of shocked to see uh, Malone up there with the with the starters uh, in in certain packages, and and looking like he belonged there. I, th- I think mm-hmm. on sa- I know it hasn't been the case for all of camp because we've gotten some good reports, but I think Saturday Malone actually shined a little bit more than Ebiketti did. At least yes. he stood out to me yes. a little bit more than Ebiketti. Um, yes. Like especially that one where he uh, slid down the backside of the line and closed that door on that run play. Yeah, like that's the play yeah. that like yeah. stands out in my mind. Uh, you know, with Malone, but uh, he was looking pretty good. And so I guess that transitions me into who were some of the players that were standing out. Give me one, one on offense and one on defense. Low. Oh, we're gonna let you. you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Low. We want to go first. Oh man, man, I appreciate that, man. Uh, so uh, well, I, I was gonna mention go Malone because I go. I ain't gonna lie to you, Jr. I don't know. I don't know if y'all seen how excited I got whenever he made that. Play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, he had got there. He had set the edge, and you know, he he dropped mm-hmm. down. You know, extended his arm. I mean, he, he it's like he teleported. Oh man, dude, it was like you know, it was fluid, man. Yeah. He was just. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> you know, and it, I, I I could swear I didn't see none of his feet move. He just, I mean, he was mm-hmm. just there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But um, I mean, yeah, like some of the surprises, uh, and, and I I don't know if this is because you know it's the talk of the town right now, but I'd be doggone, you know. Toby, Toby said, Toby said, write it down. He he said, yeah. Lipe Franks. He he said, write well, it down. Put it on paper. That's right. Um, <laughs> Toby was I penciling mean, him on the fifty three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I I was thoroughly surprised. Oh, dude, yeah, he like, looked he good. Went, he was making plays, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if y'all went back and watched some of the highlights, but whenever they were practicing the kick mm-hmm. return, like he pancaked somebody yep. on the kick return. Um, I was like, okay, Felipe, yeah. He's like right. going into this game on Friday. He's one of those names that I'm gonna have like highlighted, bold, circle because I want to see. I want to see something. Something Toby brought up. I want to see his blocking. Like, yeah, like I want to see yeah. how he blocks on a run play. What have you? Because if if he can if he can show that blocking as well as the uh, what he's doing so far as you know in catching and route running and all that jazz, um, like that could just easily cement him as as you know yeah. tight end three at minimum. If not, even though Toby was yeah. over here calling him tight end two, <laughs> right, man, I'm just saying, man. Toby, I'm just saying. Toby said, "Put it That's on right. paper." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was writing it down. Toby, who's who stood out to you? Um, I'm going to Ronald Mo Allison. He has he has really shined since he's came in with the trial. He made the trial. He survived that, and he has really shined for the Atlanta Falcons in these practices right now. These two practices we have gone to, he's shined in yeah. both. I mean, now he's had a couple of drops. You know, which is just a minor concern to me because this guy's getting open more times than he's dropping the football. Mm -hmm. And it starts in camp for me. This is where you make the team and how you perform in practices. You know, not necessarily how you do in a preseason game because this is what sets up for coaches to give you more reps because you earned those reps in the practices with how well you have practiced. So they give you more reps, and usually those are the guys you're going to be able to see more than likely have a huge shot of making this team, Mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think Geronimo Allison has a big chance to make this team. You're seeing already Ritter and Mariota are very reliant on him to get open as he does um, right there catching the football for them. 
Um, my guy on the defense, of course, I, I got to go with him, Michael Walker. I think he is going to be a major part of this defense and really getting this defense to where they need to be and moving all over the place like a chess piece, um, wreaking havoc all over the place. And so that's my guy on defense that I see that can really do some damage there. They yeah, uh, speaking on that, I'll, I'll give you my guys here in a second, but speaking on that, Michael Walker, I mean, uh, if y'all hadn't had a chance, this uh, video we're going to reference quite a bit because there was just so much knowledge dropped in it. But go back and watch that video we did with uh, Cody Anders, uh, Cody Alexander from uh, Match Quarters. But like we straight up announced saw Michael, Michael Walker with those with that simulated pressure um, on mm-hmm. a pretty regular basis, uh, whether he yeah. was coming or you know what have you. So yeah, I think that chess piece is going to be um, a, a on display more this year than it was uh, last year, and I think that has a lot to yeah. do with one of the guys that I'm going to bring up is is i think the trust that jalen hawkins is you know garnering like he like right on 11 on 11 right out the gate uh he caught an interception off of a, a tip pass and he just seems to have a knack to be you know in position to get those and he was uh you know playing good coverage all day um I know a lot yeah. of people are focusing on Grant, and rightfully so, as a second-round pick, um, who I think has has shown well so far in camp. Uh, but I'm really liking what I've seen uh, these past two practices out of Jalen Hawkins, um, because I think he's another guy that playing you know close to that line of scrimmage can come up and deliver a good hit, uh, you know, play good run fits, but also can give you some you know plus coverage as well. Uh, and and yeah, ball yeah. skills, my guy on the uh, offensive side of the ball, I tend to be kind of particular, not particular. Uh, uh, I lean more towards running backs. I like I like the running game, uh, so I know a lot of y'all are gonna be like, oh, he's fixing to talk about Quadre. I am not fixing to talk about Quadre. I'm actually fixing to talk about Avery Williams, <laughs> who was running with yeah. the ones on Saturday, and that was like kind of you know for a guy who just this year has converted to running back uh, to already be trusted enough to run with the ones. And they had a real nice, uh, like, I think it was, it was Mariota who like rolled out to his right and, you know, hit Avery Williams for a real nice gain. Uh, So his receiving ability uh, is like coming through and you add that with his uh, return ability. And he may have like very well may have, cemented himself a spot on the 53 and on the active game day too. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how he looks come Friday, like in actual live people trying to really trying to take him down. Uh, Can he, you know, can he bring that up? Can he keep, keep it going? So he was a guy that's go ahead. Yeah. I tell you what. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I I was just going to mention you were talking about uh, Jalen Hawkins. Um, I don't know if y'all noticed they were running like a mm-hmm. lot of cover threes yeah. um, over uh, on Saturday, and you know, uh, you know, y'all was talking about, um, you know, that sim pressure and that creep, that those creepers, and I'm I'm telling you something, Jalen Hawkins, he was looking like a legitimate box safety because yeah, every yeah. time I seen him, you know, on the field, it's like he would start off he up was- top and then. Next thing you know, it was like he was singing Radiohead. He was like, yeah. I'm a creep. <laughs> he, was, he was coming down there. That's it. Yeah, man. There. And, you know, that's what, you yeah. know, in, in 2019, no, 2020, uh, Tennessee ran that simulated pressures and creepers more than any other team in the NFL. And, yeah. you know, whether it was the limitation of Deron Harmon, whether it was the limitation of – you know, Deion Jones and his shoulder, or if it was a simple fact of Isaiah Oliver going down, um, we weren't able to do that as much, or Dean Pease felt like we weren't able yeah. to get into those looks very often. And But it seems like he's yeah. more confident about it this year. And it may have to do with the fact that you have, you know, Rashawn Evans, who, you know, is used to doing that. you got, you know, Mikel Walker, yeah. who's second mm-hmm. year into this, uh, into this system. You know, these are these are things and reasons why, you know, you might be able to uh, run that more often than you have been. 
Yeah, yeah. All coverages will be on display this year. Um, like you were saying, Big Low, um, we saw Grant numerous of times yeah. being that single high safety in those looks, you know, while Hawkins was down there in the box, you know, as that safety in in those types of looks. And I think you're gonna get Grant back in his usual you know, style of play like he played when he was with, Mm -hmm. you know, in college, you know. So now you get him back to his normal, what he likes to do and what he was good at doing. And the same thing with Michael Walker, they seem to be putting these guys back in those positions where they were comfortable at coming out of college in the first place. And that's what I like. But you start to really see these coaches shine through. Look at these converted players that they already got shining. Now, albeit it is practice, they have these players feeling very confident switching roles like Felipe Franks and Avery um, Williams, switching these positions from, you know, what they were doing at cornerback to running back. And the same thing from quarterback to tight end and still have Felipe Franks feeling confident playing a quarterback when he's not playing a tight end position. Right, That's yeah, what saw on the, Saturday. The tail end of that, uh, tail end of the practice. <laughs> now you could tell, like, it's probably going to be like fourth quarter they'll have Franks out there. Uh, you know, on, yeah. you know, against Detroit. It'll probably be, you know, depending on how the other two are playing or how it's going. But, yeah, the fact that they're still working Franks in as uh, as an emergency quarterback, you can even say like a gadget quarterback, because, um, you know, you get him out there in certain packages and I mean, you can do those. I know we don't like to bring it up, so to speak, but you can do some of those Taysom Hill kind of things. Uh, where you get it to him behind mm-hmm. the line of scrimmage and let him huck it deep, you know, to somebody running open. Uh, yep. So, I mean, it's good that they're still keeping him worked in that way um, because, like, the more you can do, whether it's special teams, you know, tight end, quarterback, the, the better you, you garner your chances of uh, sticking on the, on the 53. Because as yep. uh, King was asking me, you know, because everybody pretty much knows that I'm a, a you know, Quadre Olison guy. Like, if what I thought, you know, his chances of sticking, and I think it's really going to come down to how him and Huntley perform in the preseason. Because, you know, Huntley was getting runs with the ones. I like all of. <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. Man, that's one of those things I kept feeling and creeping. I was like, man, come on, don't do it. No. I was like, don't do it to me. <laughs> but anyway. So, uh, but Caleb Huntley was, was getting some, you know, decent runs with the, you know, with the ones. So I, I think, you know, obviously Patterson's a lock. Um, I would say obviously, uh, Algiers a lock. I would feel like at least right now, Damian Williams seems to be a lock. Um, and then, so Avery Williams, in my opinion, is a lock because of his return ability. And it's what he provides you on special teams. Yeah. So, do you carry a fifth running back and sixth when you add uh, Keith Smith? You know, back into the fold. So, yeah, it's, yeah that's going to be like interesting decisions that they're going to have to make. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot. Yeah. Oh, man, mm-hmm. sorry about that, man. I got my got my nose no, all jacked right. up on that one. <laughs> so let's transition into. Detroit, we got we got a game coming up. And, you know, we finally get to see the 2022 version of the Atlanta Falcons in you know in action. Yeah. Yes, it's a game that doesn't mean anything, but if you're watching this channel and if you're listening to us talk, then you watching all four quarters of a preseason game. You know, so yeah, who are you wanting to stand out? Like, like who do you have your eye on when it comes to? Friday's game. Lo, I'll start with you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I need to see what these centers are capable of doing. Um, you know, you're going up against yep. that Dan Campbell defense. You know, mm-hmm. we, we know that he's a defensive guy. And, yep. you know, he, he's going to, you know, Detroit, they've slowly been building their defensive line back to what yep. it was like five or six years ago. I need to see if that center can control that offensive line, direct everyone where they need to go. So it's one of those cases where we're not having the same issues right. that we had in the past. Like, I don't yeah. know if it's going to be Dalman or Hennessy. Well, somebody's got to step up. Whoever it is, somebody got to step up. Somebody yeah. got to step up. Yeah. So 
that, that, that that's what I'm looking for the most. I'm, I'm looking to see how this offensive line works and especially in particular yeah. that interior yeah. offense. Yeah, that's going to be because right. that's when I started, like, we came out of that first preseason game last year and I was like, oh, crap. You know, like, like my confidence yeah. started dwindling in big time. So, yeah, it's it's a good meter. Toby, who, who you – is there a position group or a person that you're, like, really looking at? So, I, I'll say this much, and it kind of leaks over to the New Orleans game. Defensively, this this Detroit Lions is going to be a perfect, perfect situation for our offense because they're going to see a lot of similar co- coverages that the Detroit Lions run right. that New Orleans runs, especially that big nickel package. So mm-hmm. I want to see what type of plays that they will have for that because they may force a lot of teams to play a lot of big nickel against them this year because of how big they are at wide receiver, tight end, running back now. And you may force a lot of teams, and you already know New Orleans runs a heavy amount right. of big nickel, especially with Ty- Tyron mm-hmm. Matthew. That's over true. there, right? So you know they're going to run a heavy, big nickel package. So now you're going to see that with the Detroit Lions. So I want to see what Arthur Smith and that offense dials up in these situations. Because I believe it'll give us a little hint on where they're going to try to go against the New Orleans Saints and how to, you know, deal with that defense that they're going to face in them different coverages. Now, as far as that offensive line goes, we got work in the early half of that game against the Detroit Lions last year. They sacked Matt Ryan about five times mm-hmm. within that first half yeah. alone, and things finally settled down. We figured out how to settle it down a little bit. So I do want to see, I mean, especially now you got rookie Aiden Hutchinson now that is over there, and he's going to be hungry to get out there and do some things that Trevor, Trayvon Walker yep. was able to do. Uh, albeit it was getting sacked in third string, and Trayvon still looked good. Yeah, but against, Aiden's going to want to put uh, his stamp on there too. That, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so – you know, with Trayvon looking good against the Las Vegas, Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders like he did, Aiden's going to be ready to prove something that he should have been the first overall pick. So he's going to be looking, you know, his mouth going to be watering to get out to either Ritter or, you know, Mariota in this game. So, yeah, I am looking for this offensive line um, to see what they're going to do. It seems here. like we all are at least uh, of like mind in the sense of, like, this offensive line has got to show something. Uh, but, for, you know, for me, it's like if you're going to yeah. lean on this run game, are y'all going? Can y'all open up holes? Mm-hmm. You know that that's the thing. Is yes. like because that's something we could barely do last year. We could, we could barely open up holes. Yes. yes. You know we we want to lay a lot of the blame, and I and I'm of the opinion that uh, a good bit of the blame was also to be laid at, at Mike Davis's feet. But if we're gonna lay it at Mike Davis's feet, then I got to see some holes be open and these other runners be decisive. Yeah. You know, and you know, can Tyler Algier like bring that physical style you know can avery williams you know show some of that you know uh scat back type ability uh you know from that punt return Mm skill set you know can these guys really bring it you know because if arthur smith wants to run his offense through like the run game and the tight ends then you know we need to see that run game come alive right uh he you know he's got to be wanting to prove that it was more than just derrick henry like Derrick Henry is great, and yeah. but you know he's got to be he's got to want to prove it that it's on his own you know situation that it was more than just Derrick Henry. Uh, but uh, outside of the run game, I'm actually really curious to see how Troy Anderson looks because um, he was the like he's the athletic freak, you know he's the quote unquote unicorn of this draft, mm-hmm. um, you know intelligence, size, speed, measurables. You know, all that stuff, uh, no matter what, just about no matter what position you stick him into that RAS calculator, it comes out as an elite player. So, like, I want to see that on the field. Mm-hmm. He's had some moments in camp, you know, uh, where, you know, he's either stopped a long run or, you know, tracked Mariota down from behind or had some good coverage. So I want to see that on the field. Like, he's he's the rookie that I'm really curious to, to see how – because – from what we saw two Saturdays in a row from Drake London, he is who I think who we think he's gonna be. You know. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. got that elite body yeah. control. Yeah. Yeah. There no issues with getting separation. Uh no, he's not the mm-hmm. fastest guy, but you you know, you can win with more than just speed and he's showing it. Uh yeah. so yeah. um I'm not so worried as much about him, but 
you know, guys like Ebiketti and, and Malone and really like Troy Anderson, I'm really curious to see uh, what he's going to bring to the table. Does he, you know, does yeah. he force the issue of us like moving on from Jones even quicker, you know, kind of deal. So that's, that's what I'm uh, yeah. looking to see is, is, is how does, how does this linebacker core look? And especially how does uh, Troy Anderson look? Yeah, I mean, the thing about Troy Anderson is that, like you said, you put him in that calculator, it always comes back that he's an elite athlete. But, yeah. you know, there. I mean, look, the fact of the matter is, is like you could you could be, you could oh, have yeah. a 4-4 four, four speed, be, you know, 6, whatever, way 2, whatever. But the question is, whenever you get there. Can you there, put it all together? Can you bring? Yep. Can you put it all together? Like whenever you get there, can you bring that man That's down it. against his will? You know, That's the question. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you hit that trash, yep. can you work through that trash and get there at the right angle? You know, to to yeah. to do what you're supposed to do. So it's like we know that he's athletically gifted, but the question is, right. is he a football player? That's the, That's yep. the right. question. That's right. what we got to find. Right. We yeah, got to figure. I, yeah. And I will tell you, you one know, last thing. I was just oh, gonna no, say we got to figure yeah. out if if you know, the, the Mountain West player of the year in three different positions, three years in a row or whatever it was, like, is that going to translate to the NFL? You know, that's always the question yeah. when you take these, yeah. you know, small school guys, uh, does that, does it translate? And that, that and that's what I want. I want to start yeah. seeing it translate and, and we're not really going to get to see it until game time. So I want to see what he looks like against yeah. the other twos and threes. Like, like, does he pop off? You know, does he, um, you know, make those like wow plays? That that's kind of what I'm I'm looking to see. What were you yeah. gonna say, Toby? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Speaking of translating, I need to see that secondary continue to do what oh, we yeah. saw him do Saturday. We've been hearing about yeah. their confidence, and we saw that confidence. Now we need to see that translate starting week one in this preseason against this Detroit Lions season. I I love I, I, just, I, I do. love what I saw out there. They would. They was getting to the ball before the receiver was getting to the ball. I will ball say this, time. as far as that secondary is concerned, I feel like we got way better depth this year than we did last year. Yeah. Oh. You know, Darren Hall oh, yeah. seems to be a lot more confident, uh, obviously, in his second mm-hmm. year in. But you got guys like um, D. Alford, you know, from the Canadian Football yep. League, who is constantly making plays. You got um, Mike Ford, who looks like the first guy yep. up. Uh, if Isaiah Oliver is not 100% ready, it looks like it's going to be Mike Ford's job. Yeah. And he, he seems to be doing yeah. well at it. I know we talked to, to a guy last, not this past Saturday, but Saturday before, who wasn't very impressed. But I've been kind of impressed with what uh, Mike Ford has brought to the table. So, yeah, that, that secondary is, yeah. like, is going to be one to watch. I mean, this defense has a chance, you know, if the cards go right, the defense has a chance to – really bring itself up close to like average, uh, which would be a huge jump yeah. to go from, you know, 32nd overall to, to league average. That would be massive. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. all right. Is there anything else that, that y'all can, anything else we ain't cover and we ain't touch on? Uh, keep your eye on Jerry Burns. I'm telling you right now. He's the guy I'm just going to have to be wrong on because what I've seen out of this guy in yep. camp number 83, just in case y'all didn't know the number, this lacrosse dude is is translating well in practice right now. Very explosive off the line of scrimmage, runs routes, you know, real good for him not to be mm-hmm. doing it a lot until now, really, you know. So I'm very, I'm, I'm just impressed with this coaching staff period, man, with what they've been able to do with converting some of these players and getting them to already play at a high level, albeit practice. We do have to keep that in perspective. But the fact that they're doing it confidently against other guys, even their own guys in practice, gives you confidence as a coaching staff what you're bringing to the table. So, yeah, definitely keep your eye on Jerry Bernhardt. Big Bernhardt. Lou, anybody that you've like got your eye on that you specifically keeping? Um, well, so coming into camp, I was trying to keep my eye on Jalen Mayfield, but well, you ain't got to worry about that. He's, know, it, uh, he's <laughs> look, he went, he went down a couple exits. I think he's putting in an application at a used car lot down there. Uh, <laughs> you ain't got to worry about Jalen Mayfield, yo. That, that man. Hmm. I mean, 
I don't know, man. I, I know that. So, so, and we were we were talking about this um, at camp, you know, because we were like, hey, looks like we don't know if it's the defense that's doing better or if the offense isn't doing mm-hmm. quite as well. Uh, yeah. We were seeing that in the run game where, where it was like, seems like there would be a hole there, but yep. it didn't just it's closes like they can't up. Hold it. Um, exactly, exactly. So it's like, Friday is going to be a good measuring stick to see yep. where we are. Um, you know, we were talking about the sideline. On oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was Tobias's player to watch was the sideline. <laughs> Tobias' player was the sideline. Because you know, Marcus Mariota, he threw a few passes to the sideline because we don't know if the, the secondary is just that good right. or, you know, if, if you know, if we, we just need some more improvement on the offense. So I'm just eager to see – What's going to happen on Friday to see, you know, how we progressed over this last? Yeah, year. I, I think I think we're all at that point, right? I think we're all at that point of like we want to see, like, is there progression, you know, from what we were able to do last year? How big of a hit are we going to take that now? Like somebody may I think it might have been uh, Tobias saying telling me not to sleep on Mariota, and I told him I was dead asleep because. Like that, <laughs> yeah. that's where I'm at right now. Until you show me, right? Until until you show me that that you can be sustainable, you know, you can say what you want to about like you know Ryan. You at least knew what you were getting from Ryan. Like you you knew exactly. that you were gonna get somewhere close to four thousand yards, if not over. And you know you were gonna get you know twenty plus touchdowns. Like you knew what you were getting. And you knew with Ryan under center exactly. that you should at least be competitive, or at least that was the expectation. Well, the expectation ain't there no more, in my opinion, because no. you know Mariota's going into his eighth year, you know, in the league, coming off of two years as a backup. So, you know, he's still the yeah. big question mark. Same thing with Ritter being a third round. Yeah. Like, are we are we going to be talking about Ritter the way folks in in a year or two, the way folks talk about Drew Locke? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I was on Twitter today and I was uh, like, uh, I saw somebody like, oh, I really hope Drew Locke gets a you know, legitimate chance. And I was like, hey, it just made me think. I'm like, is that going to be us talking about Ritter in, in the next two years? Or does he actually come in and, yeah. and prove that he should have been taken higher and that other people were wrong? So we'll see. But that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, I think that... I am going to, I know, I, like, I think I'm going to try to stream Friday's game, or at least commentary on it. Uh, Toby might jump in with me if he can uh, sneak out of work in time. <laughs> but uh, so I think that's what I'm going to yeah. do. I think I'm going to uh, stream it on Friday unless something unless something comes up, less, less life happens. Uh, y'all can join me here on Friday, and we'll we'll discover all this stuff together. So, yeah. Lo, you got anything coming up? You know, we we just gonna we we go, we're gonna have a coaches meeting gotcha. before the game. You know, probably on Thursday, and you know everybody on the coaching staff. You know, we'll sit and talk and you know see what we could you know see what we need to look out for, and then you know I'm sure after the game or the day after the game, you know we'll kind of yeah. you know give our um, you know do our due diligence and you know see how you right. see how the yep. cards no, fall. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Y'all definitely definitely. Uh, keep an eye on, on Lowe's channel for that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for us. I think we pretty much covered just about everything we yeah. had to cover from, from training camp or like we are we're going down to the bins on the 15th to watch, uh, that last open practice, but that's pretty much going to wrap up the, the training camp. And we're getting into yeah. like live football and, and, cut downs and all this other jazz and and then we'll be getting into the regular season so man low i appreciate you coming on brother yes, hey brother hey i appreciate y'all for inviting me on man Heck i definitely yeah. enjoyed it i know a lot of people have been asking yeah for, so for at time. least at least we can check <laughs> yeah, that one off yeah. the list now so to speak <laughs> folks as always y'all can follow me on twitter i'm grim 1128 toby Big Low? Big Low, get your skin. At Big Low Country on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, 
and always keep an eye on the channel as we do lives. We do like with the preseason stuff. We'll probably be streaming that kind of thing. If y'all want the access to Patreon, it's there for you. Merch links down in the show notes if you want it. Uh, but if not, no bigs. Just keep an eye on the channel uh, as we are always putting interesting things out, or at least the things that we find interesting. <laughs> but as always, Falcons fans, rise up. Rise up.